All right, back again, Luke here. And today we've got out the old Sharp Famicom titler, and I figured we could put in this game here, Crisis Force. So let's pop this in and play some of that. But uh, before we do that, uh, let's take a little bit more of a, a look at this monster here. I made a video of it uh, a long time ago. It's probably been over a thousand videos um, since I made a video on this machine. So for those of you who have not seen those older videos or who don't want to go back and watch them, I can't blame you. <laughs> so I'll give you a little bit of a rundown on this machine here. It's an extremely rare machine. It's a Famicom and a titling machine in one, hence the name the titler. What I mean by the titling part is it has this feature inside the system to where you can hook it up to a VCR VHS or you could hook it up to you know some sort of music player as well and you could mix and kind of personalize your own VHS tapes uh, for example for uh, birthdays or for Christmas weddings things like that uh, I had some preset modes in here where you could uh, press to change the background settings things like this this is the memory setting too so it al also allowed you to save what you had created on here had some different features uh, as far as like being able to change the color of the lettering being able to change the input erasing it you can go into your main menu uh, go forward backwards into different menus uh, you can do the handwritten part which down here, this is where you can write the letters. Now, as you can see from my screen, it's just basically a cracked mess right now. Unfortunately, just due to the age and the weathering, uh, this happens. But uh, normally, this was basically a touch panel. Uh, the machine does have a stylus, and the stylus just sits up here in the corner. And it says sharp on it. And what you would do if you wanted to write uh, one of the, whoa, as I drop it, if you wanted to write one of the letters on the machine itself, what you would do is just use this small space here, and uh, you'd write the letter on the inside. And if you uh, made a mistake or something like that, it would show several different uh, options. So you could erase it or you could click yes. But you would just write it inside this screen area or within this box. And uh, it would try and recognize your handwriting. Very cool feature, especially for its age. You know, it's a very old machine. But... Um, other features here, uh, it does have, uh, these are the two different modes, so when you flip it up, kind of like the Famicom Disk System, um, or the Sharp Twin, uh, when you flip it up, you know, you go into the, um, the titler mode, when you flip it down, this is the game mode. Also has a very huge eject button, as this thing is massive. Uh, it does have some other ports on it as well. So if we uh, if we take a look at the front, it's got another controller port up here. It also on the side has some different ports here for changing the lettering, lettering input or changing the color here. This is for the uh, the computer was what it says the computer. Also uh, for changing the mixing, it has sound mixing features. So, very nice. On the back here, it has uh, regular composite cables and it has S-Video. Uh, right now I have it hooked up uh, with S-Video, but also has uh, an RF converter or an RF converter spot there. So, but uh, an all around just amazing system and uh, looks beautiful in S-Video. So, what I figured we could do here is uh, give this a shot, put in a game and do some gaming here with good old Crisis Force. So another fantastic game, and I'll let you guys see what it looks like through us video on the old Sharp Famicom titler. So let's get this going here. Let you guys take a look at this here, and uh, we'll let the intro roll through uh, just to make it. Hit the old switch here. Let you guys take a look at it. It takes a couple of seconds for the intro to roll through, but you guys can take a look at that. Very good music. So.
there's the intro for it. So what we're going to do here is just hit the old start button and uh, we're going to select down here to the options menu. And in the options menu here, there's not uh, a whole lot of different options. You can change the number of players that you get. Uh, changing five is the maximum. You can change the difficulty level, listen to some of the music, and you can change A and B around. Uh, if you want B as your shoot, you want A as your change. Uh, there are some changing abilities in the game here, and I'll let you guys take a look at that in just a second. But for right now, we'll just leave it like this start it up here. Uh, there may be some parts that I miss as far as the explanation goes, but what I'll do uh, for that is I will put up an explanation or a link to the Wikipedia page for any of you guys who want to take a look at that. So let's jump in here and give it a shot. It's got some beautiful uh, graphics to it, awesome music, especially going through us video. So you'll notice at the beginning here, you're uh, trying to pick up a few different power-up weapons. Now the power-up weapons change, you can see that they're either red or they're blue. You can also change uh, your ship. So if you notice at the beginning of the screen here, it said change on it. By pressing your B button, you can see that uh, the ship's pattern or the ship's style has actually changed. Pressing it again also changes uh, the ship as well. By collecting a lot of these blue orbs here, uh, you'll wind up changing your ship into kind of a, like a floating shield for a limited amount of time and then it'll eventually go away. You can see there's a little bit of a counter on the side there. But uh, in each mode, uh, by pressing the B button, you can change your secondary weapon. You notice our ship has gone back to normal here. You can change your secondary weapon. Now what I mean by that is, while we have our fire being held down here, if I press the A button, you can notice that uh, in this mode, what I do is I wind up zooming in and out. If I uh, stop firing here, and I change modes, and I try the A button again, or my secondary weapon, you can see that it's turned into a bomb that uh, circles around me. Now, right now I'm kind of playing pretty sloppy here, but if we press uh, our next mode, and we try that again, you can see that uh, the bomb is just floating around the enemy where I launched it out at. So, there's a lot of different modes that you can play in the game, which is fantastic, uh, just for whatever one that you enjoy. Uh, for me personally, I just like the uh, the mode where it's just all up front here. It's uh, personally just I like it a lot better. This game has some awesome 3D ability. Uh, it's not really 3D. Basically, it's just layer upon layer, but it's fantastic nonetheless. It looks beautiful. Uh, there can be a lot of information uh, about that and how it was designed, things like that, on Wikipedia and the Wikipedia page, which I will link. So, uh, as far as getting hit, it is pretty forgiving because if you do have some weapon upgrades and you wind up getting hit, uh, it takes away your weapon upgrades, but it doesn't kill you instantly. So, that's one nice thing. If you don't have any weapon upgrades, unfortunately, you do die. So, very quickly, but coming up on our first boss here. This uh, first stage, you know, it shouldn't be a big problem at all, especially if, um, you know, if you're playing safely. Uh, you heard right there, that was a free guy. That's something that uh, you can get, you know, just by playing cautiously. But uh, not too difficult here. We'll use... You can see uh, I'm uh, back down to my just limited pea shooter here, so I might get hit and I might die, which... Uh, will uh, not be good, but it's a, uh, yeah, it's a not a souped up weapon at all, but normally if you don't have, uh, if you just have a uh, souped up weapon here, you can just fly through this, but uh, right now I'm just back to normal level, yeah, you can see I died right there, it's just, I mean, it takes a lot, a lot of hits there when you just have your regular pea shooter, but normally you should be able to get through it without being hit. Just some awesome music, awesome stages. Stage 2 is a little bit cooler. You know, it's got uh, some cooler themes to it, cooler music to it. And uh, the game is all about the power-ups, you know. Definitely a lot of the shooters are. You know, the more power-ups that you have, the uh, better off you are, uh, less susceptible to dying you are. But uh, something where you definitely got to try your best here and uh, avoid getting hit at all costs. Eh, like, you know, pretty much the same with all shooters, I think, but... This one's kind of cool with the robotic spiders uh, in here. In some cases, you may have to use uh, 
your bombs just to get you through it because uh, it is quite challenging. And you can see these guys are taking a lot of hits, and this is even with a souped-up weapon, so it is uh, it is taking quite a bit. Once you uh, find a weapon that you're you really enjoy, you know, make sure that you continually keep getting the same color. Um, if you do go from red to blue, then you will change up your weapon here. So. Oh, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> ah, I'm doing it again. <laughs> it's hard to uh, remember, you know, you have to let go of the fire button if you want to uh, change up, and you have to hold it down and then press the A button for your secondary weapon, so it's something that you learn. Ah. You can see my weapon kind of drop down there, so... But, uh, you know, it's a fantastic, it's an awesome Konami game. I mean, if if you haven't played this one and you don't have it in your collection, there's, uh, you know, if, if you're if you're into shooters or if you're into, you know, Konami games and stuff like that, uh, this, is, this is one of those games that's just fantastic to have. So yeah, speed boost right there. We're coming up on our second boss. This boss is kind of cool. See, we're, uh, we're clearing a lot of stuff here. Try and use our uh, bomb there. See if we can get another bomb. Try and take him out. Oh, uh, you can see up in the uh, upper left-hand corner. I don't think I mentioned that. You can see how many bombs you have. You can also see uh, how many lives you have left. Ooh, he's angry now. Yeah, not a whole lot I could do with that one. But, uh, yeah, it's an, I mean, it's an awesome looking game. It's an awesome playing game. It really plays smoothly. Fantastic uh, graphics. Has really good sound to it. And, uh, it, it's a, like I said, it's an all-around easy game to play. This is a stage that's really got some awesome graphics. Really makes you feel like you're in a pit, you know, or in a deep crevice. You gotta watch out in the background because uh, those things will kill you if you run into them. So make sure that you, you uh, pay attention here to the backgrounds. Not a whole lot of time here for reaction time, but definitely awesome. Sometimes they'll throw in some uh, enemies there too that you gotta collect or you gotta uh, attack while you're flying through this maze here. So. But uh, yeah, just wanted to show you guys a little bit of what Crisis Force looks like here for the uh, old Famicom, and it's a terrific game. Really, really well-designed game. One of uh, another one of Konami's fantastic uh, shooters here and uh, games in general. But just want to share this with you guys for right now, and yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon. So thanks for watching. Oh, as far as continues go, too, you only get three continues in the game, so you have to be uh, kind of careful. As you can say, this is far from careful. <laughs> ah. Got a free guy there. That's cool.
getting not so fun. I think we're coming up on our next boss here. See the uh, kind of awesome uh, features there. 